My fiancé knows I'm just a kid trapped in an adult-sized body. Recently, to keep my curious brain busy, and to keep me from constantly complaining about how robots never work, she gifted me a few puzzles and brain teasers. This here is one of those puzzles. It is called a Grecian computer and it has five layers with numbers on them. We can consider the bottom layer as being fixed and the remaining four layers as dials that can be freely rotated. The set of numbers on each of the layers is laid out in 12 columns. And so, the goal of this puzzle is to rotate the dials until the numbers in all these columns add up to 42, which as we all know is the answer to life, the universe and everything. For example, Given the current state of the puzzle, if we add up the four numbers on this specific column, the total is not 42, and so we must continue searching for the right combination. In total, we can rotate the dials in this puzzle to 20,736 different states. And by the way, there is only one correct combination that solves the puzzle. It would take a really long time to find a solution if we were to use a trial and error approach, so how can we possibly solve it? Well. I actually have no idea. I mean, for real. I cannot think of a different approach to solving this puzzle besides trying all the different possible combinations and seeing if the numbers in the columns add up to 42. If you know a better way, please let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, this video would be very disappointing if it were to end here. Is it really true that I haven't been able to solve the puzzle? Well, no. I wrote a few lines of code that are able to find a solution for me. In the remaining of this video, I'm going to explain how I've approached this puzzle from a computer programmer's perspective. Hopefully, in a very accessible way so that anyone can understand it, even if you don't know how to write code. The first thing we need is to find a way of representing the layers that make up the puzzle. So let's take care of that right now. Let's make a cut through the puzzle and transform the layout by unrolling the puzzle. This would break the wooden puzzle in real life, but in this animation it works just fine. We can now copy the numbers from the puzzle into a table, and we basically end up with a tabular representation of the current state of the puzzle. Of course, the puzzle is actually made up of several layers, and so what we actually need to do is to write down the matrix description for each individual layer. Let's start with the top layer. There's the number 3, then an empty space, then the number 6, another empty space, 10, empty, 7, empty, 15, empty, 8, and empty again. I'm actually going to cross out the empty spaces. And notice that even though that's pretty much it, we can think of this layer as having holes everywhere else, spanning the entire puzzle. So I'm just going to cross out all of those as well, for the sake of completeness. As you can see, we end up with a matrix that has 12 columns and 4 rows just as we expected. Now, we just need to repeat this process for the remaining layers of the puzzle. Let's actually write down these matrices in our computer program. I'm using a code editor called Visual Studio Code and a programming language called Julia. On the left, we have the text file where we are going to write our program, and on the right, we have the command prompt where we will be running our code. For example, we can calculate how much 2 plus 3 is and create a list of numbers 1, 2, 3. You can see that I've already written down the matrices for each layer of the puzzle on the left. For example, this is layer 1. I define the matrices in a method called getLayers, and this method returns all 5 layers. We can test it in the panel on the right. If I call the method, you can see it outputs all the layers, but I can also select each layer by using an index. So for layer 1, I would get it like this. And for layer 5, I would get it like that. That's pretty cool. We've now got the layers of the puzzle in our computer program. The next step is to overlay these matrices on top of each other to simulate the stacking of the dials on the real-world puzzle. We need to pay special attention to the holes in the matrices in order to calculate the correct state of the puzzle. Let's go back to the programming environment. You can see that I have defined a new function called calculate. It takes a state and the layers of the puzzle as inputs, and then for each layer, it finds all the elements different from zero, which are the actual numbers on the puzzle, and saves them in a variable called non-zeros. Next, we save only the non-zeros of that layer into the state variable. We repeat this for all the layers, and then we return the resulting state. Let's try it out. 
The get layers function from before is still available, but we need to create a new matrix for the state of the puzzle. This will be overwritten, so let's initialize it with all zeros. We are now ready to call the calculate function. And there we have it. This is the state of the puzzle for the current arrangement of the layers. Next, we need to emulate the rotation of layers on the real puzzle. Trying to move the layers left or right, as they are right now, would not capture the rotary behavior of the puzzle. We could try to approach this by copying the layers left and right infinitely, but that would not be an efficient usage of our computer's memory. Instead, we can emulate the rotation by simply taking the left or rightmost column and moving it to the opposite end of the matrix. This is a common operation when manipulating matrices, and so there is already a function that does this for us in most programming languages. In Julia, this function is called circ shift, short for circular shift. As we can read from the documentation, this method circularly shifts the data in an array. And the second argument is the shift amount for each dimension. In our case, we will pass a 0 and a 1, because we don't need to rotate any rows, but we want to rotate the columns once. I decided to abstract away this call to circ shift by putting it inside my own method called rotate. Below the rotate method, I have defined the most important part of the code in a method called solve. This is where the magic happens. In short, we have a few loops that are going through every possible combination of layer rotations, calculating the state of each combination and stopping when the solution is found. This method takes as inputs an array where we will store the final state of the puzzle, as well as the five layers of the puzzle, in whatever rotation they start with. Then, these four loops are essentially going through all the 12 possible rotations for layers 2, 3, 4 and 5. Remember we can safely assume that the first layer is not movable, and that does not change the puzzle. This line here calculates the state based on the layer's current rotation, and then this line returns if, and only if, all columns sum up to exactly 42. Otherwise, the loops are not interrupted, and so, we just call our method to rotate the layers before checking the immediate next state. And that is pretty much it. We now have at our disposal everything we need to solve the puzzle programmatically. What we need to do is to get the layers, initialize the state with all zeros, call the solve method, and then we can display the state as well as the sum of all columns, just to double check. We can now call solve in the terminal on the right. And there we have it. The solution to the puzzle, finally! Here is the solution on the real puzzle after I rotated the layers to match the number layout in the solution state. Feel free to pause the video now and check for yourself that each of the columns in the puzzle are summing up to exactly 42. Finally, just for the fun of it, we can measure how much time our naive brute force approach takes to find a solution to this problem. I will comment the two print statements in the function so they are not interfering with the benchmark. As we can see in the printed statistics, our solution took on average 1.2 milliseconds. Of course, since this is a brute force approach, the solve time is dependent on the initial configuration of the layers. But I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that even if we were to initialize the layers in the worst case scenario, meaning that our algorithm would have to try all of the possible combinations until the solution is found, the computer program will always be much faster at solving this kind of problems compared to a human physically trying to rotate the layers of the real puzzle through all possible combinations and summing up the columns. That's it folks, this was all I wanted to share with you in this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, and please let me know in the comments, do you think this was a legitimate way of solving the puzzle, or was it blatant cheating? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.